Yo, what's up? We are now on uh, Highway 3 towards Elverum and uh, today I want to test something. I'm going to check out the brand new road between, uh, where is this place called again? I don't know, but you know the, the new road via Elverum. I haven't tried it before and I want to see how autopilot works on a branch bank new road. So, sorry for the shake, by the way, in the instrument cluster. Uh, this is the best I can do. I put, uh, put my phone to record it and it's mounted on the panorama roof. And then the other camera is mounted on the front windscreen. So here comes the section of the brand new road. It was open about a week ago. So let's see now. So I'm on autopilot, you can see it here. When, when this one is active, it means that we have autopilot. Okay, so it turned to the 90 zone. It went from from 80 to 90 zone. Okay, let's see where is that Tesla going. Uh, okay, now this one is just oh wait oh, oh oh okay they're going that way. okay. So let me increase my speed here. So again ah oh, okay. So you see now autopilot. Well, I mean auto steer is restricted to 80 kilometers per hour. It doesn't know about the, the higher speed limit. So there are two things I can do. Well, actually, one thing I do, I can just do this and then I can increase my speed. But then we don't have cruise, uh, auto steer, but then you can increase the speed. But if you enable uh, cruise, well, now it works. Okay. Yeah. Okay. Let's uh, let's cruise now at uh, 100. Uh, now it disappeared. Okay. <laughs> because as of today, the car does not read signs. It will just base it on GPS. Even today, AP2 cars doesn't do that. AP1 cars will read signs. I don't know when the, the sign reading feature will be implemented. But uh, let me see. From what I heard, there will also be some uh, two lanes in each direction section. So right now we are just in the 90 zone and it's supposed to be 110 zone also. So this is uh, pretty exciting for me to test a brand new road. Never seen it before. This, this section that used to be so damn slow. There were 60 zones and let me see, uh, maybe even 50 zones, but at least m lots of 60 and 70 zones. And now we have 90 and 100 zones. So yes, I actually haven't tried to count how long it takes for the new section versus the old one, but we might be talking about several minutes of uh, time saving here. Energy savings? Probably not, but it's so far so good. I'm actually quite surprised that the auto steer works now, even though you see the map, uh, according to the map, we are just off-roading kind of. Well, it, it actually knows it on the map already. I'm also surprised that the, the map has been updated. Okay, okay, here we go. Now we are 110 zone. Let's see now. It's, you see, it thinks it's 50 zone. We will increase the speed. Let's do uh, 10 kilometers per hour over the speed limit. Let's see if we get any phantom braking here. I'm prepared for everything now. <laughs> oh, okay, okay. So it will actually do uh, 120 in the... Okay, now it up to the 80 zone. Okay, let's see if auto lane change works. Oh, it doesn't work. The car doesn't know that we have another lane there. So I have to manually override. Now it kind of sees it. Okay, but you see... It doesn't become a. It doesn't see the the line the lane to the left here. So if you want to change lane, that doesn't work. But it it cannot at least stay on this lane. So that's that's good because I have to explain to you guys that Tesla Autopilot is based on vision and sensors, other sensors. But at least vision, whatever the car senses around you, actual surrounding plus map info. So some places you will have some weird brake, maybe not hard brake, but more like slowdowns at the same spot. And that is because the map is telling the car that you, you better slow down here. But, uh, well, let me just check it. Okay, so we have, a, I have to react to this. There's a truck, you see, it won't change lane. Auto change, auto <laughs> doesn't work. Okay, so we just have to change lane manually. But many times, the car is reacting to map data rather than visual. I mean, for, for us humans, we are, I guess we are also a, a mix. We will, uh, we will react to, uh, to what we see and what we hear, but we might also react to, uh, you know, our memory. We know that this place uh, is dangerous, so you better slow down. 
or something like that. And that's in a way how. Um, oh, 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 now it's okay. Now it preconditions, by the way. But now it slows down. So now I have to override. Uh, it won't allow the auto steer to go too high. So otherwise, I will be slow poking here. So let me see. Where is this? Okay, okay, we are over there now. Wow, this is this is quick, man. People are hammering us. Wait, what? Huh? What? What sign is that? Uh, is that uh, UK? I think that was UK license plate. But uh, let's see now. Um, I think I can still. Oh, okay, okay. I know what what's happening now. That we are so close to the old road, which had a 70 zone. So the car thinks we are on the old road. If I use autopilot, yeah, you see. <laughs> so that, therefore, it will force me to uh, to all go only 10 over the speed limit. But now maybe 80 zone. Maybe I can go. No, still okay. So, but I'm actually uh, a little bit surprised and impressed because I was expecting some mad slow down bra uh, phantom braking or whatever and it's not happening even if we don't use um, auto steer we only use adaptive cruise control it can still maintain the speed it doesn't it doesn't react and say oh 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 you're driving too fast here we have a we used to have a sharp oh there we go now the first one a little a gentle slow down there okay not too bad i didn't do anything i, I mean i didn't uh, press the accelerator it it just speeded up by itself I guess I'll try to... Yeah, now it works. Okay, now it works. Now we can use the auto steer. But uh, I still... You see, it doesn't see the other lane here. But... Hey, I, I'm... I wonder if this is... Is this a coincidence? Or did they update uh, Tesla autopilot? Because in the old days, every time I draw on a, a fresh new road, it would just be bananas. It would go Texas. Yes. <laughs> It will break, it will slow down, it will do all kind of shit. But now it's actually acceptable because I've tested lots of other systems. I remember uh, back in the days when I tested the EQC on brand new road on E18 between Christian Sun and Leidervik and... Oh, it kind of seized the... Okay, but anyway, but with the EQC, that system seems to be mostly visual based or sensor based not that much map heavy so I could drive on also brand new road without any bra hard brake there was actually no no slowdown or whatever the car just kept going and I could also use auto steer on the EQC and back then if I bet if I tried it with a with a Tesla it would just slow down but here maybe Tesla changed it so it's more um, more visual biased and not so map heavy so yeah this is going way better than expected <laughs> let's see if we get any uh, other weird what, what was this a swiss guy what what are all these foreigners doing here how did you get in okay you see auto lane change still doesn't work but it sees the other lane when we change lane <laughs> yeah so, I mean, eventually, Tesla must be so good. The, the neural network, the autopilot, has to be so good that it can drive as good or better as a human. Well, at least better than Norwegian. <laughs> no, but, uh, you see, hum any human can fi figure out that this, this is another lane. We can drive here. We can change lane here. But as of today, the car can't do it yet. It would be interesting, by the way, to try an EQC or a Taycan or a Leaf here, you know, with those systems, ProPilot, LFA, or whatever, see how they react to this new road. But wow, this is going to be uh, my new stretch then when I go uh, between Oslo and Trondheim. I'll take this one. So it actually, this stretch here makes Österdalen route even faster than Gudbrandsdalen. You guys remember, I measured it uh, not a long time ago, it was a couple of weeks ago. I measured it and I found out that back then, back then we had to go around you know, Baustelle and stuff, those slow detours around the old road. And Österdalen was still about 40 minutes faster. I think now it should be 45 minutes faster. 
Okay, so now we come to a merge, or well, actually one lane disappears. Let's see what happens. I will just cruise on autopilot. Oh, okay, maybe I should manually slow down here. Let's do that. Yeah, this is the, the roundabout. If you want to go to um, Trysil or Elverum, you take right. But we are just going straight to what? Wait, wait, uh, what? Oh, I have to be in this lane. Okay, okay, okay. All right, all right. Ah, because the other lane goes that way. Oh, okay, okay. So let's see. And then, ah, oh, okay. Noob here. Then I have to turn left here. And of course, to increase the efficiency of roundabout, you should use left turn signal. Because then you signal that you want to turn left. And then other people who are waiting around the roundabout, they can, they can also drive uh, accordingly. You know, so um, it shouldn't be necessary for me to understand the basics of roundabouts. But okay, ah, oh, this stretch here is just uh, dual uh, lane, uh, no, uh, no overtaking possible. Hmm, I wonder if it's going to be like this all the way to the end point. Yeah, the end. The new stretch here ends in about uh, five, uh, five kilometers, I think. And by the way, to the right of us now is the slow stretch. We had to, in the old days, you had to drive via Elverum and slow and 60 zone. Well, is it even 50? No, I think it's 60 most of the time. And it, this, if I remember, it was a six, I mean, it was a 90 zone, by the way. But we have a trailer in front of us. And trailers in Norway, they are limited to 80 kilometers per hour, regardless of anything, really. Regardless of the weight of the trailer or the speed limit, it's 80 kilometers per hour. So. That's why we are not driving that much faster than this. But again, uh, yeah, it can deal with uh, <laughs> autopilot. So, you know, you guys who watch this and you expected some scandal, some, uh, some, some uh, screw ups or whatever. Now, oh, too bad for you. Yeah. And as for me, I had no idea. I just needed to test this. And I also wanted to try to drive the new road. And it's very pleasant compared to the old one. The old one was so annoying, man. I mean, actually, the, the road itself was not annoying. Oh, okay, we have overtaking stretch. Interesting. Yes, let's see now. So now when... Oh, okay, the Toyota is also driving kind of slow. So you want to hammer the Toyota. Toyotas are always slow. Is there a 90 zone? Okay, let's go a little bit faster. I just want... Oh, shit. It's a... Okay, it's just a short one. Okay, let's... Uh, Let's try to overtake this trailer. Barely legal, barely legal. This is why I have patrons. People who can pay for my speeding tickets. <laughs> okay, but let's see. So if you just cruise now, it will merge kind of ish, ish. Let's see, oh, what's gonna happen now? Oh, 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 Okay, yeah, it did what it typically do. It would just go in the middle. That's what the autopilot uh, usually does many times. <laughs> okay, well, there was an, a little overtaking stretch there. It's not two plus one like you see on the E18 between uh, Oslo and Stockholm. That was just a, a tiny pocket you can overtake. And then it now it went back to uh, one plus one with a middle divider. And then eventually, how is it going to be? Oh, okay, okay, okay. Not too bad, not too shabby. So I yeah, the battery by the way is pre-conditioning. So I want to heat it up. I'm going to fast charge afterwards, do a little test there. I'm doing several tests now in the same trip. I'm actually going to Bergen by the way to see a company called EV Services. For what I heard, they are almost like Rich Rebuilds uh, electrified garage. Yeah, yeah. But that's a different story. But, okay, so far so good. Uh, you see, well, I, I was about to comment. There was no speed limit. But then suddenly it went to 80. And I think this is because over to the right here of us now, the old stretch there had an 80 zone. And then this car just snaps into the old road and thinks that we are driving there. And then it says 80. But it still allows you to go faster than uh, 90. Because if you... Uh, from what I remember, if I was driving on the old stretch, the car wouldn't allow you to go 100. So there is some kind of compromise here that uh, the, the computer does like, okay, the car, you know, let's see, that, that, that was the old one. Okay, you can see the old one to the right. What is that? Well, actually that's, 
technically a 50 zone for the longest time, but it was an 80 zone before. Oh, I remember now. <laughs> This stretch here that we are driving on used to be the old road. But then what you see to the right is a temporary road they made. And then the, the car probably still remembers this section here, which was 80 zone. That's why you see we are limited to 90. If I try to go higher, oh, it, it doesn't go higher than 90 here. So that's usually how it works. So maybe this was... Uh, how how good of a test was it? Because we are driving partly on new, completely new roads, like like I mean, new area, like we did earlier. But now we are driving on technically on the old stretch of road, just just safer and smoother and whatever. And then of course, then you also expect the autopilot to work. So um, yeah, interesting to see how it worked. Maybe I, if you guys like this shit. I can try some other stretches. Wait, can I can I get over here? I wanna go to the resting area. Okay, I can yeah, okay. I'm a Mexican, yes. So let me just get in here first. I have to focus. I'm a man. I cannot do two things simultaneously like a woman. But yes, I wanna say that if you guys like these autopilot uh, videos, I can make some more. Maybe I'll have some other ideas about what to do. So let me just park there. That's gonna be it for now. Yes, I hope you guys enjoyed this video. As always, thank you for watching and talk to you later.